I don't mean to sound arrogant, but <clears throat> feel yourself to be blessed that you ran across a person as intuitive as me. If you put down a bunch of European school books and college courses, I cannot give you a guarantee that I'll do well. I probably do all right with a very good tutor, all right? But if you ask me about emotional or what you call intuitive IQ, man, please. I am, a, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I am an eagle and everybody else is a monkey. <laughs> I'm an eagle with metal wings and everybody else is a monkey. So I'll explain to you what you're looking at right here. Up there to the left, about a year ago, Ron DeSantis did like many racist people do and tried to alleviate white guilt and say that, hey, um, slavery benefited black people. They learned skills and yada, yada, yada. That sparked a whole bunch of outrage among <clears throat> not, not just Democrats, but even black Republicans stood up and said something, right? So over the course of time, I think they realized that they stood up and said something, but <clears throat> they were not really being supported by the community. The black community didn't really get behind the Republicans who stood up and said something about... Uh, you, you know, the black Republicans who scorned that statement from Ron DeSantis. So what ended up happening is that if, if you really don't have no community backing, you know, it's kind of like if four guys go up against an army of 100 because they thought their city was going to get up to get rid of these invaders. But you end up for you guys wind up going and attack a military encampment. <clears throat> and there's a hundred dudes there. If your community don't rise up like you thought they would, guess what? <laughs> y'all finna get hung. Y'all finna get put on the firing squad. Like, what the F were y'all trying to do? Like, really? And the Republicans, the black Republicans who stood up against what Ron DeSantis said, you know, they were kind of like those four guys. We are the community that didn't get behind them. So what Byron Donald was forced to do he didn't like like if you want to promote the black family let me give you a statement that you could say he could establish his very own youtube channel or either he can go you know to morehouse spellman a hbcu or a black community center and he can take his microphone and walk around and say black and not just among black people but among everybody two-parent households just work out a lot better you know, the children tend to be smarter. They tend to be more driven. They have ambition, goals. Um, you know, boy and girl, they get to see man and woman together. So therefore, it's not just about, well, let me pay you money then, you know, the very second we have the first lover spat, it's over with. Let's beat each other up and break up. No, I looked at my daddy deal with my mama's bad attitude that she would have from time to time, all the time. I looked at my mama deal with a lot of my daddy shit. There's a way that you deal with that. You know, she would grab her purse and my two sisters and be like, I'm finna go to my sister house for a couple of hours, you know? And she would make my dad a ham sandwich before she left with big giant pieces of pickle on it. So I know how to keep a man calm. He's just in a broody mood because he just got off work right now. Very broody. It's Monday. I'm finna leave for a couple of hours. Come here, Keisha. Come here, Pamela. Let's go. You get what I'm saying? Two parent households create a better mental and emotional construct within human beings and it teaches them how to live together as man and woman. And that, there's nowhere in this world where that doesn't create a better result than some funky ass ghetto. Can I ask the people listening to this video a question? What was so hard about Byron Donald saying that? You see what Byron Donald was doing is that he was submitting. He was submitting to what you see up there in the left corner, what Ron DeSantis said, because the thinking of white people, not all white people, but the most racist elements of uh, right wing Christendom, they love to go to South Africa and they'll get black South Africans who are willing to say it you know, they'll be like, well, life was better off for some of us under apartheid. Now, what they won't tell many of the 
people who may look at those videos is that they're actually talking to coloreds because the black people in America will just look at everybody who's mixed or black as black and they'll find dark skin coloreds and coloreds had a slightly privileged position under apartheid so they love to go to South African and uh, to South Africa and record black people talking about that life was better under apartheid. Now, apartheid is just like slavery, you know, grape, torture, murder, the breaking up of families, the selling of the husband away, the daughter gets sold over here, the son gets sold over there, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, women are sexually violated in front of their husbands and sons and daughters and all of that stuff. And then just the brutality of sitting out in the hot southern sun with no AC with a man telling you he's going to kill you if you damn near ask for water. There's no benefit and there's no good in that. And Byron Donald at one point, along with black Republicans, stood up against a person saying that. All right. But they believe that they are the closest thing to God and that the righteous hand of the Lord extends down to the crown of the white man. And then he extends his right hand down to the Negro as the Negro's only hope of civilization and salvation. Those are white supremacist Christian beliefs. So whenever you see something like marriage being associated with an institution where white people have a brutal control of black people, then that is an extremist white supremacist statement. I'm telling you, it's an extremist white supremacist statement. And what they made him do was go to Joy Reid of everybody so that she could take her Marxist feminism and then dig up an old terroristic story from the 1940s or the early 1950s of a black of a couple of white dudes, a white militia that terrorized a black man and his son because the black dude's son wrote a letter to a white girl that he liked. So this white militia came and kind of killed them. They drug them out to the river. I think they made the dad shoot his son or something like that. Now, I can show you millions of couples on Facebook that are black and born in America, and nobody is looking over, <laughs> nobody is looking over their shoulder believing that a white mob is going to come kill them because they're black and married. But there's a reason why Byron Donald associated marriage with Jim Crow. If you think about it, it's the exact same white racist Christian mentality that makes them go to South Africa and say, well, your black life was better off underneath my brutal white control, regardless of how many complaints you have about it. You people are animals. And you can turn around and relate that right back over here. Your marriages only work when we have some type of control over you. Byron Donald didn't have to say Jim Crow. And if you think about it, like if you went to clarify yourself, why didn't you go to a Republican uh, media outlet? Why didn't he call up his girl, Candace Owens? As a matter of fact, let me ask you a question. When was the last time you ever seen Candace Owens with a black conservative male who was not a drugged out rapper? Don't worry, I'll wait. <laughs> Never. They're not going to do that. That's not how the Republican Party operates. Even when it came to Candace Owens, rather than put her with a black male Republican and have them stand together. And even if they're not married, OK, they're just doing a conservative podcast together. They would never do it. They're not going to do it. It irritates and it burns them to holy hell to see a black man and a black woman in any shape or way doing anything on the same page. There's no reason under the sun God created for Byron Donald to have went to Joy Reid. This dude could have went to Candace Owens and a plethora of conservative women, men, and podcasts to clarify himself. Instead, the Republican Party used a Marxist Democrat feminist to beat up on this dude. And I'm going to tell you the real reason they beat up on him. The real reason they beat up on him and made him declare his Negro inferior subserviency to the white Republican Party is by forcing him to go out and associate the ability of black people to be functionally together only with a time period of brutal control of white people.
okay? And now I guess they let him back in and threw him a few cookies. I, he had to we, uh, re-win his loyalty to the, Demo uh, to the Republicans, but I will say this, his community ultimately did not really get behind him. His community did not get behind him. So that's part of the reason why he had to kind of do what he did. But anyways, intuitive IQ, intuitive IQ. Anyways, thanks for listening. I'm out.